refrigerator, downstairs bathroom, heater, upstairs bathroom, heater are the two Sweet. that are 20 amp that we can do. Okay. Cool? In the last video you guys saw, we finished up all of the supply lines for our plumbing, so now it's time to move on to electrical. In one of the previous videos, we went around and nailed in all of our outlet and switch boxes on the walls, so now we're just going around and running wire to all of those boxes. We started running all of the dedicated lines, so the washer, the dryer, the refrigerator, our range, our range hood, the upstairs and downstairs bathroom heaters, all get their own 20 amp circuits. So we ran all of those dedicated 20 amp circuits first. Okay, I'm gonna pull it. You just have to kind of give it, give it to me to pull. Okay. Since our breaker panel is mounted on an exterior wall, we just drilled a big two and a half inch hole through the bottom plate of the exterior walls, which goes right into the crawl space. We're gonna run most of our wires through the crawl space and then up into the wall. That way we're not boring holes in all of our studs um, and it will just look a little cleaner in the walls. And if we ever do need to add wire, change something out, um, or replace anything or repair anything, it's going to be really easy to access because it's all in that crawl space. Once we were done running all of those dedicated circuits, we then moved on to the outlets on the first floor. As you can see, the outlets have two cables running into each of them. One gets power from the previous outlet and then one transfers that power to the next outlet in line. I'm going to talk a lot about how we're actually wiring the boxes and how we're hooking everything together in a later video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. After running all the wire into the boxes, we went around and stapled all of the wire to the studs. So this particular wire needs to be secured within six inches of a box. So we have a staple really close to the box and then every four feet after that it has to be secured as well. In the living room and kitchen area, we don't have to jump from interior walls to interior walls. So we did just drill holes through the exterior studs for all the outlets. To keep the holes at the same height, I just drilled at the height of my knee. This just kept the wire looking nice in the wall.
Unlike all of our outlets which are going to be on a 20 amp circuit and only need 12 gauge wire, our dryer is going to be on a 30 amp circuit which requires 10 gauge wire, so that's what that orange cable is. The only other thing in our house that will require a larger gauge wire like that is going to be our mini split AC system which will also require a 10 gauge wire. So while we are at the store we got our bathroom vent fans. This is the vent fan. It looks like we just put a couple screws and nails in to the joist and then it sticks out however much for drywall, half an inch, and then you can slide the cover over it. It has an output right here for the actual air to go through. In addition to the vent fans, we got our recessed can lighting. So. Yesterday we put in all of the outlets and we got all the outlets wired downstairs, but we kind of had to stop there because we didn't have any of the can lights in place yet to be able to wire the can lights up. So now that we have these lights, we can go ahead, install these, and then we can go ahead and wire all of this up. Are you there? Um, yeah. Right. Is centered on what we want. Which should be the center of the line, right? Yeah, the center of the line. So okay, you need think. to go to the window. You need to go which way? This way. South. There? Yeah. Uh, when we're looking at what type of LED lights we want to go with, they do have slimline lights, which are basically just the thickness of the drywall itself. However, I think roughing those in would have been a little harder. So these ones were just installing the regular housings and then they have LED inserts that screw into them. So if we kick this one, keep that one all the way that way. If we kick this one all the way that way. How much do you have in between them? 67 inches. 67 inches would be right here so we can do it right here and just push it all the way to this side yeah let's do that and then all of the lights have this little screw that you can screw in that way the light doesn't slide back and forth on its arms our first three lights We also had seven can lights in our kitchen living room area. They're going to be on two different circuits and then the kitchen is also going to have a hanging light over where our table is going to be. Um, I'm going to go into more detail in another video about how we actually chose where these lights are going to go because I think the layout is pretty important and there aren't very many good videos on YouTube about that. So stay tuned for that. The next day we came back and started running all of the wiring to the lights. We started by running all of the main power lines to the lights and the lines that would link switch box to switch box and give them power. We did this through the crawl space once again to just keep it nicer upstairs.
One second. So we need more of that? Okay. So make a loop everywhere, right? Yes, make it so it comes down from the... Right. And then I don't... This far. Yeah, like that. So I can go into the light and back out. Right. Because you have a hot, the red one, which turns on the fan, and then the black one turns on the light, and they're hooked up to separate things in there. Oh, it won't matter. Yeah. That would be fine because they'll both use the same neutral and the same so ground. So Let's connect to this one. Ground. This is 12 3. It's the same thing we're using for the three way lights. boxes for the smoke detectors you need one in each living space or each bedroom you need one outside of the bedrooms but not within three feet of a bathroom door you need one within three feet of the high side of a slope ceiling but not within the top four inches of the ceiling so we're good right there we're using 14.3 to wire all the smoke detectors which is a three conductor cable plus a ground because you need a hot, a neutral, the ground obviously, and then the red wire is going to act as a traveler wire. So if one smoke detector goes off, they'll all go off. Perfect. We also made sure to run wire to where our outside lights are gonna go. We're gonna have one directly over the front door and then we're gonna have two outside the back door on either side. And then while we're out, we also got, I don't think that's supposed to happen. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. We're gonna have uh, two or three more really in-depth videos about how we're actually wiring all of the boxes together and how we're terminating all the wires at our panel. So stay tuned for those in the future. And make sure if you have any questions, you leave a comment below and hit that like button if you enjoyed it. And make sure to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more updates.